Hey everyone, how's it going? I am actually up in Chicago because tomorrow I am taking my certified Cicerone tasting exam. So I'm actually here in this really cute little B&B and uh, I figured I was going to do an off-flavor tasting and was wanting to show it to you guys. So this is a, let's see if we can get the camera to focus. There it is. It's an Aroxa beer off flavor tasting kit uh, that I got through the certified Cicerone. Um, I think they're around like 60, 70 bucks a piece. So kind of expensive. And I figured we'd go through and show you how it's done, or at least how I'm doing it. So you need the kit. You need two 12 ounce beers. I'm using Heineken because it's a pretty neutral beer um, and really you want the flavors to be able to go above any beer so definitely don't use like an IPA or something along those lines. Um, you want a towel and tasting glasses. So I have seven tasting glasses here and I actually have written out a little plastic sheet that has the different ones on it so I can put it directly on there and know which one I'm dealing with. And I'm traveling so I don't have my main tripod or anything so we're gonna try to make this work with the camera. I only have a little tripod desktop. <clears throat> and the reason I have seven is because you need a um, control beer. So this one will not be uh, uh, spiked with an off flavor. So the first thing we're gonna do is move <laughs> some stuff around. This desk is very small, <laughs> but it's a desk. And let's see if we can get you to focus on glassware. There we go. Alright, so we're going to take our Heineken and we're going to put about an ounce and a half, two ounces of beer. And yeah, everything is warm so it's going to foam up real bad in each of the glasses. Might not foam up as bad if I picked them up and poured it properly, but it would be harder for you to see. And honestly, for this, you don't really need carbonation in it. So, now that we've done this, I have a cheat sheet that tells me what the different uh, tabs are. And we're going to move you again back to where we were. There we are. So, I have a cheat sheet that tells me what the different uh, tabs are. They come in like pill. Um, hold on. 
Alright, so I've got a cheat sheet that tells me what the little tabs are. Um, they come in these little pill forms, so you got to break open the pill and drop in the uh, contents of the pill into each beer. Um, so, I'm going to go ahead and do that. So we're going to start off with Infection, which is the all-green pill. And it just goes directly into the beer. And this will cause it to uh, foam up, too, as well. So we're going to do Light Struck next, which is the yellow and blue pill. Let's see if we can get you to be able to focus on it. Next we're going to do trans 2 nonanol, which is a white and pink pill. And we are going to do acetaldehyde, which is the old red pill. Now we're going to do diacetyl, which is red and green, very Christmassy. And last is DMS, which is yellow and red. Alright, so now you basically need to swirl them, try to get as much of it to dissolve into it, and let them sit for about two minutes, according to what they say. Now this is the fifth one I've done, and I can tell you it usually takes a little bit longer than two minutes, so, at least in my experience. And I don't know if this is the best way to do all of this, but this is the way I've been doing it. Um, Alright, now we're going to let them sit for a little bit, we'll be back, and I'll go through the tasting with you. Alright, cheers. Alright guys, it's been about 10 minutes or so since I've done it, and I kind of went through and swirled them again, and we've got most everything appears to have gone and uh, dissolved into it. So, this is how I do it, again, like you may want to try something different. The first time I did this, I found it very overwhelming, and at 70 bucks a pop, it's good to take your time. I rushed through all of it, and I was worried that they would go bad, whatever, and they would stop working right away. They're fine for a couple hours, just telling you. You, in fact, I've been leaving them overnight for the next day. I'm getting a quick sniff again in the morning before, you know, I pour them out. Um, are they as good in the morning? No. Or at least some of them. But you, you still get the idea of what it is, what that smell is. So, what we're going to do first um, is DMS. Now, the certified Cicerone <clears throat> webinar thingy that it comes with has like all of the information on each individual one that you need. So I'm gonna let you go ahead and go through that. But this is uh, diacetyl or, or, I'm sorry, not diacetyl, uh, DMS or dimethyl sulfide. Um, 
So, first, you give it a swirl and a quick sniff. And I already get it off of there. It smells to me like um, rotting vegetable matter. <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry, allergies. I don't travel all that well with allergies, so I get a get a little snorty. Sorry about that. So yeah, give it a uh, give it a swirl and a quick sniff. Two quick sniffs. That's all I need for it. And I smell like this rotten vegetable. Now, this is our control. So you can take a quick sniff off of it and compare the two. So I get a sweet, kind of grainy, slightly malty scent off of the Heineken, where, again, quick swirl. Yeah, kind of rotten, like, and it's, it's, it's a very light smell for me anyway, where it's this, like, kind of rotting vegetable matter. Yeah, doesn't smell good. So the next one is diacetyl. And this is one that I have a hard time with. I'm just gonna be straight. Oh, I actually got it that time. I don't always get it. Um, it's like, I get it as movie theater popcorn. I really do. Right. Again, this is one that, I guess my nose acclimates to it quickly because I do not get this every time. See? Don't get it after that. Now, next is acetaldehyde. Um, this one for me is kind of an off sweet smell. So kind of like a saccharine. Mm, didn't get it that time. So you can... Sorry about that. My uh, battery died for my camera. So here we are. I believe I was talking about acetaldehyde. Um, so, again, this one's this one and diacetyl are a little difficult for me. So you can cover it and swirl it, and you're capturing all of that in there. So you're basically atomizing the beer into the atmosphere in the glass, and then you can. And then, when I do that, I can get a hint of the smell post. Um, and this is why you have a rag on hand because at least the way I do it, I get it on my hand. So we're gonna do it again. Yeah, it's there, but barely. So now, trans to non -anal. Um This one, I it's hit or miss on whether I get it um, on the nose, and if I do, like it's, uh, it's usually after it's been out for a while. No, I got it that time. That one, straight up cardboard. Smells like wet cardboard to me. Yeah, so I did the cover because I knew this one's difficult for me to catch, so. Cover, swirl, sniff. Yeah, yeah, I got that one. So, next, light struck. Light struck for me smells like someone smoking a doobie. Just straight up. Yeah. Yeah, not a problem. I get light struck without any problem. Some people have a lot of problems with light struck. Um, I don't know. I get it. Infection. Infection for me. See? Not getting it off there. Not getting it off there. So most of these are the covered swirl and sniff for me. Yeah. And when I get that, I get this like hint of um, vinegar. So that's what's going on there. Now remember, you still have your control. So you can always go back and forth and be like, <clears throat> uh, diacetyl control. So, okay. So I can tell, even though I can't tell you 
every time that it is diacetyl, I can tell there's something not right. And since I know that diacetyl is one of the ones that I have issues with, it's a guess on whether it's that or not. Oh, I was uh, telling you earlier, um, the first time I did this, like, I rushed through it. I was worried that <clears throat> the samples were going to get bad. Um, you don't need to worry about that. Like, you can pour them all out. You can go through. They're good for hours. Like I said, I will leave them overnight, and I'll give them another sniff in the morning. But if you're really concerned about it, one of the things I've done is I'll do three at a time. So I'll do... You know, DMS diastole and acetaldehyde first. And when I go through those, then I'll pour the transtudinal light struck and infection, and then I can go through those. And when I go through those, then I can go back and do the back row again. So it's not that bad. Just take your time, go through it. This stuff's expensive, so you want to make sure that you're getting your money's worth. Now, I poured this. And I've gone through and I've done my initial smell. And I've got most of them. Um, but I'm going to cover them up. And I'm going to come back in half an hour after my nose kind of resets. And I'm going to do this again. And I'm going to do it again. And I'm going to do it again. And then I'm going to leave them out. And I'm going to do it again first thing in the morning. Because my test is 10 o'clock tomorrow. So I'm just trying to hammer it home what all of these smells are. Now you can go through and taste these. Um, I have tasted them. Some of them are real bad. Gross. Uh, Transtunonanol, I don't always get on the nose. I always get it on the tongue. Every time. Every time. So you can always give that a try. It's good to know what they taste like and smell like. Um, well, I guess that's it. Uh, wish me luck on my test tomorrow, and I will let all of you know how I did. All right. Catch you later.